Bien, vamos a comenzar lección cuatro. Um, do you have any questions from lesson three? Uh, I do. Um, why is cabbage feminine? So cabbage la col, why is it feminine when it la ends col. in the L? So that's actually not from lesson three. <laughs> that's a future lesson. Um, the simple answer Just is this. because it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because... It's Spanish and because it is, right? So, uh, you know, the simple rule, the general rule is words that end with O are masculine. The words that end with A are feminine. The words that don't end with one of those letters tend to be masculine. There are more masculine words in the Spanish language than there are feminine words. Uh, but then there are other words that just are the way that they are, you know, um, I think with probably any language you have rules and then you can have exceptions to the rules, right? It's an exception. I mean, it's not even necessarily a rule because it's, you know, there's no rule that says words that end with L are masculine, <laughs> right? right. Um, it's just that particular word happens to be feminine, right? Okay. It's just, that's the way it is. So that's why, you know, we can, we can study grammar rules, but at the end of the day, the language is the language the way that it is. itself, yeah. right? And for, for things like that, it's just helpful to, you know, study it individually, right? So hey, then special... is, go ahead. I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Um, so then if you were, is the cabbage then la col? And then if you were gonna say the cabbage, you would say la, la col? No, no, no. So la means the, so the. cabbage okay. is col. Cabbage col. is col. So if you wanna say Got the it. cabbage, you say la col, la right? Col. That's just okay. the cabbage. Yeah. So, and it's just, when you come across a word like that, just take note of it. Um, you know, the, the, remember that masculine and feminine words have absolutely nothing to do with masculinity or, you know, it's just, right. that's, it's just that's a word. borrowed concept from Latin. That's how Latin worked and that's how Spanish works now. And it's more just for keeping things in line. Like if you were to add like the word purple to say the purple cabbage, right? Knowing that it's la col then helps you change morado to morada to, to keep the gen, you know, to keep that lined up. You know, grammatically speaking, it should be spoken that way. Okay. If, if you happen to say el col morado, guess what? People are still going to understand you. <laughs> like you'll, right. you'll still be perfectly understood. Uh, and it's just one of those things, you know, it's for, for perfect Spanish, you should know that it's la col. La col. For communication, it honestly, in my opinion, doesn't matter a whole lot. Okay. Um, next question. I have three. Next question. To okay. drink is both beber and tomar. When do you use one versus the other? I get this question asked all the time, right? Honestly, there's no difference. Um, okay. There's, you know, it's, we're, we're learning tomar y beber, which we're going to take a look at in today's lesson. They both mean to drink. Uh, one's an AR verb. One is an ER verb. So there's a difference in the way that they work, which we're going to take a look at today. Uh, this is a personal observation. Uh, I'm not a native Spanish speaker, so I can only give my personal observation from having lived in Latin America and speaking Spanish for the past 20 years or so. Uh, I can't think of a time when I've been invited to beber una cerveza. I've mm -hmm. been invited plenty of times to tomar una cerveza, right? Okay. So my, my personal observation is that tomar is the dominant word. It's the word that's used a little bit more. Um, it's my assumption that beber is perhaps used more in Spain and tomar is perhaps used more in Latin America. Again, it's an assumption, so there's no factual basis for that. I'm just completely assuming that. Um, when I spent time in Spain, it was right at the beginning of my Spanish speaking career. So I really didn't speak enough Spanish to be able to make a good observation. 
But when I lived in Argentina, I spoke Spanish fluently 100%. And here in the United States, I probably speak more Spanish on a daily basis than I do English at this point. Uh, I've got, you know, family that speaks Spanish. I have friends that speak Spanish. And I never hear them using the word beber, right? Okay. Um, to kind of further elaborate on that, about the only times I've ever heard a native Spanish speaker use the word beber is when I'm in a very touristy part of Mexico. Mm. <laughs> so most Americans get taught the word beber and don't necessarily get taught the word tomar. And so that's why I think waiters at restaurants in touristy parts of Mexico, like Cancun, use the word beber just because they expect you to kind of know that word <laughs> and they don't expect you to know tomar. That's oh, wow. again, it's an observation. There's no factual um, evidence behind that. Tomar does have other uses. Uh, so it can mean other things in the future. We'll see that it means to take, like to take medicine, to take pictures, to take classes. Okay. And baby, I would not be used for those. To take. Okay. Last question then. I just want to make sure that I understand this correctly. So when we're talking about el hombres and la mujeres, making that plural would be los hombres, correct? Because yeah. of the mixed so genders. Just be careful because the singular is el hombre and then la mujer. For hombres, you change it to los hombres. Okay. And then las mujeres, because it ends with an R, we need to add an ES to make it. Plural. Yes. But talking about the group, it would be los hombres. Okay. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Good questions. Bien. Uh, so today we're going to review uh, how to introduce ourselves. We'll talk about things that you like and then this. Again, we'll keep looking at that masculine feminine thing. New stuff. Uh, today's one of my favorite lessons. This is where we truly learn how to start speaking Spanish by looking at verbs and learning how to use our verbs. Uh, real life situations, we're also gonna talk about how to order food at Mexican restaurants. We'll talk about Mexican food and we'll read about Mexico. Bien, so just to kick things off, another way that you can say hi to people is to say, hola, que tal? Que tal is like saying, how's it going? kind of, you know, loosely translated, right? Hola, ¿qué tal? Oh, muy bien. Bien. Now, to truly become conversational, you can flip it back over to me by saying, ¿y tú? ¿Y tú? Sí, excelente. Uh, so you can say this one to me. Me llamo Alex. Estoy estudiando español. ¿Podemos practicar? Sí, me parece bien. ¿Cómo te uh, llamas? Me llamo David, ¿y tú? Me llamo Alex. Mucho gusto, Alex. Mm, igualmente. ¿Dónde vives? Vivo en Arkansas. No, Denver. ¿Y tú? ¿Y tú? Uh, vivo en Denver también. ¿De dónde eres? Soy de Arkansas. ¿Y tú? Soy de Georgia. ¿A qué te dedicas? No entiendo. So, this is the true way to ask somebody what they do for work. Think about oh. it like this. It sounds like, what do you dedicate yourself to? ¿A qué te dedicas? So, here, typically, we would respond with a title. So, I would say, for example, yo soy maestro, right? I'm a teacher. Mm. You're a financial advisor. Do you remember right. how to say that? I don't. Okay, so make sure to write this one down. Soy consejera financiera. Soy con consejera. 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 Financiera. Good. Soy consejera financiera. Muy bien. And now you say. ¿Dónde trabajas? So make sure to ask me, ¿y tú? Oh, ¿y tú? Soy maestro de español. ¿Dónde trabajas? Trabajo en Denver. ¿Y tú? Sí, yo también trabajo en Denver. 
Now, when we're talking about things that we like, gustar just works differently than, than everything else. So you can't say y tu, you should say y a ti in the conversational response here. Alex, te gusta bailar? Sí, sí me gusta. And now you say y a ti? Y a ti? Ah, sí, me gusta. Te gusta cocinar? Mm, sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? Sí, me gusta. ¿Te gusta jugar al fútbol? No, no me gusta. ¿Y a ti? A mí tampoco. ¿Te gusta tocar un instrumento? Tocar. ¿Qué significa tocar? Tocar es to play. Play? In. Play. In this uh, context, to play. In yep. No, no me gusta. ¿Y a ti? Sí, me gusta tocar la guitarra y los tambores. Mm. ¿Te gusta esquiar? Mm, sí, sí me gusta. Uh, ¿Y a ti? Uh, a mí me gusta hacer snowboarding. Ok. ¿Te gusta viajar? Viajar. ¿Qué significa viajar? Viajar, to travel. Oh, sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? Sí, me gusta. Mm. ¿Te gusta tomar vino? Sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? Uh, no, no me gusta tomar vino. ¿Te gusta correr? Mm. Yeah, uh, sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? Sí, me gusta. ¿Te gusta leer? Sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? A mí también. Mm. ¿Te gusta ir de compras? Mm, no entiendo. Ir de compras, to go shopping. Oh, sí, sí me gusta. ¿Y a ti? No, no me gusta. <laughs> para nada. <laughs> sí. Bien. Adiós. <laughs> Chao. Nice. Okay, good job with that. Very good, Alex. Bien. Uh, so the word the is the definite article, right? And in Spanish, we learned that you can say el, la, los, or las, depending on the gender and the number. Uh, if we wanted to say, for example, a or an, that's what's called a definite article. Um, we use def indefinite, sorry, indefinite article. We use indefinite articles when we want something, but it doesn't matter which one we're getting. Like if I just wanted a pin, I don't care if it's the blue pin or the red pin, I just need a pin, right? So. Uh, in Spanish, this is going to change depending on the gender. So to say a or an in the singular form, you can either say un or una. So to say a boy, it's un niño or a girl, una niña. Okay. To say some, you would either say unos or unas. Mm -hmm. So un niño changes over to unos niños. Una niña would be unas niñas to say some girls, right? So that's if it ends with a vowel. Let's practice here. How would you say a brother? Mm, un hermano. And then some brothers? Unos hermanos. Un hermana? Uh, so Una. There you go. Una hermana. Unas hermanas. And what about mm. some siblings? Unos hijos. Unos hermanos. Unos hermanos. hermanos. All for brothers. Mm. Yes. Unos hermanos. It's a brother and a sister, right? You're not wrong to say unos hijos. That just means some children, if they're your particular children, right? But if we're trying to say siblings, like sibling is the neutral form of brother or sister. So in Spanish, you default masculine. Una madre. Unas madres. Una padre. Uh, so it wouldn't be una. Un, un padre. Unos padres. And then Unos padres. Muy bien, good. Uh, una alumna. Un alumno. Unos alumnos, alumnos, uh, unos alumnos. Mm, una me maestra, un maestro. 
unos maestros, unas maestras. Mm. Un estudiante, una estudiante. Uh, unos estudiantes, estudiantes, unas estudiantes. Mm, un hombre, una mujer. Boys or men and women still? We're yes. looking for, yeah, some men and some women. Exactly. Unos hombres. Unas, um, unas mujeres. 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 So this one ends with a consonant, so we have to add an ES on the end. Mujeres. Unas mujeres. Un profesor. Profesor. Uh, una profesora. Unos profesors. Profesor. Profesores. Prof oh, because it ends in an R. Unos profesores. Unas profesoras. Muy bien. Un hijo. hijo. Una hija. Muy bien. Unos hijos. Hijos. Ok. Same thing applies to things, right? Un lápiz. Unos lápices. La manzana. So, una manzana. Oh, una on. manzana. Um, unas manzanas. Un libro. Unos libros. Mm, un naranja. No. Una naranja. Una. There you go. Unas naranjas. Una pizarra, unas pizarras. Un borrador, bor, bor, borrador, unos borradores. Borrador. Borradores. Una silla, unas sillas. Mm. Una idea. 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 Unas ideas. Un paraguas. Muy bien. Unos paraguas. Good. This word typically throws people off, but it's it's a weird word because it ends with an S, even though it's singular, but it's singular and plural, right? Muy bien. Mm. Mm, una mochila. Mochila. So the singular mochila. L produces the L sound. Oh. Mochila, unas mochilas. Okay, so conversationally, this is how we would use these, right? Imagine when you go shopping, if you need to walk in and you're thinking about buying something, right? You would typically walk in and say something like, hey, I need to buy a pencil, right? You're not sure which one you're gonna buy yet, so you use the indefinite article, a, uh, to start the conversation off. But when you're ready to buy it, right? Imagine the person is like taking something off of the counter or off of the shelf and putting it on the counter for you. And at the end of the conversation, you've decided exactly which pencil you're going to buy. So you would say something like, okay, I'll take the pencil, right? Mm -hmm. So as we go through the shopping process, we're defining exactly what we're buying. So we start with an indefinite article, una or una. But when we're ready to make the purchase, we change over to saying, okay, I'll take the, pe the pencil, okay. right? So let's practice like this, Alex. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Necesito un lapiz, ¿cuánto cuesta? Un lapiz cuesta 10 centavos. Bien, necesito un paquete de papel también. Un paquete de papel cuesta dos dólares. Llevo el paquete de papel y el lapiz. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Um, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Ne necesito 
Un lapis, ¿cuánto cuesta? Un lapis cuesta 10 centavos. Bien. ¿Cuánto? And so now you're going to say, I need a book. Mm. También. Bien. Um, cuan... So you want to say, necesito. Necesito. Uh, un libro, también. Un libro cuesta nueve dólares. Llevo. Un. So now you want to say the. El lapis y el libro. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Neces necesito uh, un bolígrafo. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Un bolígrafo cuesta un dólar. Bien. Neces necesito uh, un papel. ¿Cuán también. Mm -hmm. Or for, for paper, right? You might buy a pack of paper. Un paquete pa de papel. Un paquete de papel. También. Bien. Uh, un paquete de papel cuesta dos dólares. Mm. Llevo un el bolígrafo y el paquete de papel. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. Gracias. Necesito. 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 Uh, e -e -o. Necesito. Necesito. Ah, necesito uh, un marcador. ¿Cuánto cuesta? Un marcador cuesta tres dólares. Bien. Uh, nece necesito. Necesito um, una la pizarra también. So, una pizarra. Una pizarra uh, también. Muy bien. Una pizarra cuesta 10 dólares. Um, llevo el marcador y la pizarra. Gracias. Chao. Ok, muy bien. Nos vemos. Vamos a conversar. Eh, Alex, ¿te gustan los refrescos? Sí, sí me gustan los refrescos. ¿Te gusta el jugo? ¿Qué significa jugo? El jugo es juice. Oh, oh juice. Sí, sí me gusta el jugo. ¿Qué prefieres tomar? Sí. Mm, ¿Me prefieres? So here you're just going to say prefiero. Pref you change. Prefiero there you go. el jugo. Uh, ¿Te gusta el vino? Sí, sí me gusta el vino. Uh, ¿Te gusta la cerveza? Sí, sí me gusta la, la cerveza. ¿Qué prefieres beber? Mm, prefiero el vino. ¿Te gustan los nachos? Sí, sí me gustan los nachos. ¿Te gustan las quesadillas? Sí, sí me gustan las quesadillas. ¿Qué prefieres ordenar? Mm, prefiero las quesadillas. ¿Te gustan los tacos al pastor? Mm, sí, sí me gustan los tacos al pastor. ¿Te gustan los tacos de pollo? Mm, sí, sí me gustan uh, los tacos de pollo. ¿Qué prefieres comer? Prefiero los tacos al pastor. ¿Te gusta la sopa de tortilla? Sí, sí me gusta la sopa de tortilla. ¿Te gusta la ensalada? Mm, sí, sí me gusta la ensalada. ¿Qué prefieres ordenar? Prefiero uh, la sopa de tortilla. ¿Te gustan las fajitas de pollo? Sí, sí me gustan las fajitas de pollo. ¿Te gusta la carne asada? No, no me gusta la carne asada. ¿Qué prefieres comer? Uh, Prefiero... Prefiero las fajitas de pollo. ¿Te gustan las enchiladas de queso? Mm, sí, sí me gustan las enchiladas de queso. ¿Te gusta el pescado frito? Mm, ¿Qué significa el pescado frito? ¿Fish? Fried fish. Fried fish. No, mm, 
No, no me gusta el pescado frito. ¿Qué prefieres ordenar? Uh, prefiero las enchiladas de queso. ¿Te gusta el helado? Uh, sí, sí me gusta el helado. ¿Te gusta el flan? No, no me gusta el flan. ¿Qué prefieres comer? Mm, prefiero gusta el helado. Uh, just prefiero. Prefiero, prefiero el helado. Prefiero el helado. Okay, so now we want to try and match this up uh, with the article. And this time we're going el la los or las. Uh, and then the color that describes it. So how would you say the, the apple is red? La manzana es rojo. Roja, because it's Roja. Mm -hmm. ¿Te gustan las manzanas? Sí, sí me gustan las manzanas. Mm, los plantones son amarillo, amarillos. Ah, amarillos, muy bien. Okay. ¿Te gustan los plátanos? Sí, sí me gustan los plantanos. Mm, los arandanos son mm, azules. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. ¿Te gustan los arándanos? Ah, uh, sí, sí me gustan las arenados. Um, la fresca es rojas. La, la fresca es roja. There you go. ¿Te gustan las fresas? Sí, sí me gustan las fresas. Mm, las, yeah, las naranjas son anaranjadas. ¿Te gustan las naranjas? Sí, sí me gustan las naran naranjas. Mm, la lechuga es verde. ¿Te gusta la lechuga? Sí, sí me gusta la lechuga. Mm, la ju judías verdes. Las judías verdes. Las judías verdes son verdes. ¿Te gustan las judías verdes? Uh, sí, sí me gustan las judías verdes. Mm, la zan, zanahoria. So you don't es, pronounce the H, so it's zanahoria. 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 Zanahoria es mm, anaranjada. Muy bien. ¿Te gustan las zanahorias? Sí, sí me gustan las zanahorias. Uh, la co es... Mm. ¿Cómo se dice purple? Morada. Morada. ¿Te gusta la col? Mm, no, no me gusta la co. Um, el pimiento, pimiento rojo es rojo. ¿Te gusta el pimiento rojo? Sí, sí me gusta el pimiento rojo. Muy bien. Describe el lápiz. Lápiz es... Mm, Chico amarillo. Chico? It's small. Small? A normal pencil. Grande. Oh, grande it's amarillo. This pencil, it's bigger than the guy. <laughs> that pencil's bigger than the guy. Entonces, describe el lápiz. Mm, el lápiz es grande y amarillo. Muy bien. Describe el libro. El libro es... Uh, viejo y marrón. Describe la mesa. La mesa es uh, bonito y So here morado. we want to say bonita because oh, it's bonita. la mesa, right? Bonita. La mesa es bonita y mm, morado. Morada. Also, with an a, right? I know this is hard. This is hard stuff. <laughs> Describe la pizarra. Uh, la pizarra is 
Grande y blanca. Describe la planta. La planta es bonito y verde. Uh -huh. So it's la planta. La planta es bonita. Ta. Y verde. La planta es bonita y verde. Describe la silla. La silla es bonita. Es mm, rosado. Describe el marcador. Uh, el marcador es... Es mm, nuevo. New. Nuevo y negro. Describe el bolígrafo. El bolígrafo es... Mm, El bolígrafo es nuevo y anaranjado. Describe el teléfono. El teléfono es viejo y rojo. Describe la computadora. La computadora es mm, caro y azul. So it's la computadora. La computadora es cara y uh, azul. Muy bien. Describe el cuaderno. El cuaderno es nuevo y gris. Perfecto. All right, so my favorite part of Spanish is conversational Spanish. <laughs> so let's back up a little bit. What's a conversation? A conversation is a talk, especially an informal one between two or more people in which information and ideas are exchanged, right? So my favorite word here is the exchange, okay? So what's an exchange? Uh, conversationally, the way it kind of looks like if I could illustrate this process would be that, you know, conversation partner A comes up with some sort of an idea, right? of what we're gonna talk about. So if we look at this image, we can assume this person's thinking about eating, perhaps eating burritos, right? Now, the person takes that idea and verbally forms a question, right? Comes burritos? Do you eat burritos? Now, the person that's listening has to hear the question and then process the question, form an idea, and then verbally respond to it. Si, sí, como burritos. Does that make sense? Yes. Sí. So this is kind of my illustration here of what a conversation might look like or an exchange of information. Now, the key word that we're going to, that we have to learn how to use is what's called a verb, which is some form of an activity, right? So what it says here about verbs are that most conversations are made of questions and answers. Learning how to change the verbs based on the exchange of information is how to start speaking Spanish, right? So basically, this is what we have to focus on if we want to learn how to truly become conversational, that exchange that takes place with the verbs, right? So how do you start talking? How do you start conversing with people? You have to be able to ask questions, understand questions, inform a response, right? And that's how you're able to start speaking any language. So a verb is an action word. I eat burritos. In Spanish, I would say, yo como burritos. If you're unsure of exactly what the verb is, right? Uh, you just ask yourself, what's happening? And you're gonna identify the verb. Someone here is talking about eating. So eat, eating, that's the, that's the activity. Verbs work differently in Spanish than they do in English. We typically don't change our verbs a whole lot, right? In Spanish, they're gonna change every single time depending on who is performing the action. So here I have yo, yo como burritos, I eat burritos. I am the person that is eating, right? So the verb itself is comer and it changes based off of who. If I wanted to change it to say you eat burritos, I would say, tú comes burritos, right? So 
this is the, the change that you have to get comfortable with. Mm. Yo como burritos, tú comes burritos. Como changes to comes, depending on who we're talking about, right? So here you can notice this O changes to an ES. Mm. All right. In Spanish, just like in English, we have what we call a subject pronoun. That's the person that's doing the activity, right? So in English, you could say I. In Spanish, you say yo. In English, you say you, or in Spanish, you say tú. The thing about this is, because these verbs change in Spanish, these words are optional. You do not have to actually say yo or tú when you're speaking Spanish. You can, it's not wrong to say it, it's just not necessary. So I like to take baby steps here. Let's talk about the first and the most common verb type, which is what's called an AR verb. So I like to start with the verb desear, which essentially means to want. You can look at the Latin root to desire to make that connection. Sometimes that's easier for people to learn. Now this is what we call a regular AR verb because it ends with AR. This is the infinitive form of the verb, like if you were to look it up in the dictionary, this is what you would get, okay? Loosely translated, this AR on the end of the verb is like our to before the mm. verb in English, okay? So an AR verb ends with AR. The first step to being able to say I want or I desire is to remove the AR ending. And once we do that, we're going to get what is called the base or the stem of the verb. So everything that becomes comes before that AR is going to be used when we're actually talking, okay? So we've got our base, desse. Yes, Step two to saying I want is to now add back an O. So to say I want, I would say yo deseo. Mm, yo. To say you want, we're going to add back an AS to the base. So we'd get tu deseas. You tu deseas. Okay. Sí. If we throw it up on a verb chart, this is what it looks like. A lot of people use verb charts to learn languages. So we've got the infinitive desear, which means to want. We've got yo deseo, which means I want. We've got tu deseas, which means you want. Tu deseas. Now, this is a model we can apply to any other AR verb, like ordenar, which means to order. So, Alex, how would you say I order? Mm, yo, yo, or ordeno. Muy bien. And how about you order? Mm, tu ordenas. Good. Mm, tomar, yo, yo. Tom, yo Tomas, Toma, no, Tom. same, Toma, yo Tomo, yo tú, Tomes, Tomas, 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 with an as on the end, right? Reservar to reserve. So how would you say I reserve? Mm, yo res. Reza, reserv, yo reservo, reservo. Uh, to reservas. There you go, good. Bailar, to dance. Uh, yo bailo, to be, bailas. 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 Mm, yo cocino. 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 Tu cocinas. Cocines. Yo es, esquio. 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 Tu esquies. Yo viajo. 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 Viajo to viajes. Uh, viajas. Viajas. It's always going to, with our AR verbs, it's always going to end with an as on the end. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Vamos a practicar. Número uno. 
João hmm, Jo ordeno un burrito. Tu uh, tomas una cerveza. cerveza. Yo reservo una mesa para tu. Uh, para dos. Tu, para, dos. <laughs> para dos. Yeah, para dos. Tu um, deseas postre. Tu bayar. Mm -mm. Tu bayas. Bayas. Bailas. Remember, the singular L produces the L sound. Bailas. It's the double yeah. L that produces the Y, but the single L produces an L. Bailas. Tu bailas. Bien. Yo mm, cocino comida mexicana. Yo esquio. Esquio. Esquio poco. Esquio poco. Yo. Yo esquio poco. Tu uh, via, viajas a mucho. Okay, muy bien. All right, the second regular verb type is what's called an ER verb, again, because it ends with an ER. For example, comer means to eat, okay? So it's basically the same steps here. If you want to say I eat, we're going to start by removing the ER ending and we get our base, which is com, right? C-O-M. Add back an O to say I eat. Yo como means I eat. This time we're going to add back an E-S to say you eat because it's an ER verb. Tu comes. Okay. Right? Comer. How do you say I eat? Uh, yo como. And then you eat. Uh, tu comes. Beber. To drink. Yo bebo. Tu bebes. Leer. To read. Mm, yo leo? Yo leo. 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 Yo leo. To leyes. Good. Correr. To run. Uh, yo coro. Coro. To corres. Uno. Yo, yo como un burrito. To bebes una cerveza. Uh, yo leo un libro. To Cores en el park. Parque. Parque. Uh, to lace la revista. La, la revista. La revista. Yo bebo jugo. Tu comes tacos. Yo corro cada día. So conversationally, this is what it looks like, right? We're typically going to ask questions in the two form. For example, do you want a cookie? Deseas una galleta? And then we're going to answer it in the yo form. Si, sí, deseo una galleta. Deseo una galleta. Okay. Right? So there's your exchange that you have to get used to. Vamos a practicar. ¿Comes los burritos? Um, sí, como los burritos. ¿Bebes la cerveza? Bebo la cerveza, sí, bebo la cerveza. Bebo. Bebo la cerveza. ¿Lees las noticias? Sí, leo las notis noticias. 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 ¿Corres en el parque? Mm, sí. Corro en el parque. ¿Tomas el café? Sí, to tomo el café. ¿Ordenas la pizza por teléfono? Ah, uh... oh, sí. Uh... Sí, ordenas la, mm -mm, ordeno la pizza por teléfono. Good catch, very good. ¿Deseas unas vacaciones? 
Sí, deseo unas vacaciones. ¿Bailas la salsa? No, no vayas la salsa. So, no bailo la salsa. ¿Cocinas bien? Mm, sí, cocino bien. ¿Esquías en la montaña? No, no esquías, uh, no esquío en la montaña. ¿Viajas frecuentemente? ¿Qué significa frecuentemente? Frequent? Fre frequently. Uh, ¿Qué significa viajas? Do you travel? Oh, hmm, no, no viajo frecuentemente. 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 Okay. Uh, ¿Reservas un hotel pronto? Sí, reservo un hotel pronto. Muy bien. Bien. So, another situation that we can apply this to is ordering food at a restaurant, right? Uh, so, when you walk into a restaurant, you're typically greeted by la anfitriona, which is the hostess. Uh, and he or she would say something like, en que le puedo servir, which means, how can I help you? Okay. As the diner, the comensal, you're going to say, mesa para dos, por favor. Table for mesa two. para dos, por favor. Yeah, yes. let's practice. En que le puedo servir? Mesa para dos, por favor. ¿Deseas tomar algo? Deseo, deseo, deseo. Uh, un refresco. ¿Deseas una entrada? Appetizer? Uh, ¿Deseas una quesadilla? ¿Deseo una quesadilla? Right? So, just to kind of illustrate that again for you, right? Your chain, I'm asking you, do you want an appetizer? And you're going to answer, I want. Right? Deseo. Mm -hmm. Deseo una quesadilla. ¿Deseas postre? Deseo el pastel. ¿Es todo? Sí, es todo. La cuenta, por favor. Okay, muy bien, Alex. Bien. So, there's the full dialogue, right? And it's in your book. Um, I have a very strong suggestion here for a fun way you can start practicing Spanish. Uh, this is going to be hard until it's not hard. It's going to be awkward until it's not awkward, right? The, the only way to do it is to go out and do it, you know? Um, you can take your book with you to the restaurant and use this little dialogue here to, to actually do this, right? And one of my favorite restaurants is called Real de Minas. Um, there's one here in my neighborhood in Montbello that's close to 40. Fifth and Peoria, it's, it's essentially I-70 in Peoria. Uh, and what is it? At, it's called Real de Minas. And everybody that works there speaks Spanish. But honestly, it, it just, if you have a favorite Mexican restaurant in Denver, like the employees probably speak Spanish there as well. So uh, go to Real de Minas or just about any other Mexican restaurant and try it, give it a shot, you know, tell them just like what we did in class. Me llamo Alex, estoy estudiando español, podemos practicar. I can almost guarantee you, your server is going to say yes. And then you can actually use this to, to try and order your food. Okay? okay. Muy bien, give it a shot. Um, vamos a hablar un poco de la comida mexicana. ¿Comes la comida mexicana mucho? Mm, sí, como la comida mexicana mucho. ¿Y cómo se llama tu restaurante mexicano favorito? Uh, sí, ¿cómo se llama tu restaurante so, mexicano? Here, here I'm asking you, what's your favorite restaurant called? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Oh, um, mi restaurante mexicano favorito es Cine Rex. There you go. Okay, muy bien. ¿Qué ordenas en los restaurantes mexicanos? Um, mi ordenos. Yo ordeno. Yo ordeno a los restaurantes mexicanos. Uh, ¿Qué sería? Un qué sería? Una qué sería. So the un best way to answer that would just to keep it simple. Ordeno una quesadilla. 
ordeno una quesadilla. Yep. A veces toma cerveza con la comida. ¿Qué significa veces? A veces means sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, sometimes want beer. Sometimes do you drink beer oh. with, with the food? Sí. Um, tomo cerveza con la comida. Uh, uh, ¿Qué bebes normalmente? Oh, um, bebo agua. ¿Prefieres tomar una margarita o una cerveza? Uh, prefiero una margarita. Um, ¿Reservas una mesa antes de llegar? ¿Qué significa antes de AR? Llegar. Uh, before llegar. arriving. So, do you reserve a table before arriving? Uh, sí. Sí. Uh, reserve, reserva una mesa antes de llegar. ¿Desea comer comida mexicana hoy? Sí. Desea com como... Comer. So uh, here we have two words together. Just like in English, you wouldn't say, I want, I eat. You say, I want to eat. So remember mm -hmm. that this ER ending is like saying the two. So you just say, deseo comer. Dos. Deseo comer, comer, comer comida mexicana. Eh? Yeah. Ordenas la comida en español? Mm. Sí, ordeno la comida en español. ¿Te gusta el flan? No, no me gusta el flan. Perfecto. Vamos a leer de México, Alex. So this is just a reading activity and after there will be a true-false uh, questionnaire, okay? okay? Let me know if there's something you don't understand here. México es el país ubicado al sur de los Estados Unidos. Según Wikipedia, hay más de 110 millones de personas en México. El español de México tiene un acento fuerte. The middle is, uh, in Wikipedia, Mexico has 100 million, 110 million people in yeah, Mexico. More, more than. More than 110 million. Mm -hmm. um, Sp Spanish in Mexico. Uh, Spanish is what Mexico speaks? So, not exactly. The Spanish of Mexico has a strong accent. Accent. It's very distinguishable. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, did you have another? No, I didn't know what the top one was. Uh, okay, so Mexico is el país, the country. Ubicado means located. Al mm -hmm. sur de means to the south of the United States. Okay. La capital de México se llama Ciudad de México. También es conocida como el Distrito Federal o simplemente el DF. The capital of Mexico is Mexico City. And so this part says it is also known as the federal district or similar DF, el DF, like how we call Washington DC, DC for short. DC. Es una de las ciudades más antiguas de América del Norte. La población es de más de 21 millones de habitantes. La arquitectura tiene influencias indígenas, españolas, y modernas. Um, the second is there's 21 million inhabitants in la uh, población. There, there are over 21 million. So think about Demos that. Like, is more. This, uh -huh. the, the city of Denver, the whole metro area, 
right? The city of Denver itself is about 500,000. If you include the whole metro area, you're looking at about 2 million. Mexico mm. City has more than 21 million people. That's a lot of people. Gigantic. Uh, and then the last is um, the architecture um, you have of that time everything. influences modern. Yeah, you have to read it backwards. So the architecture has indigenous, Spanish, and modern influences. Okay. Right. The first one says it is one of the oldest cities in North America. Okay. Right? Like, I think the oldest city, I want to say the oldest city in the U.S., is it St. Augustine in Florida? Yes. And it was like in the 1500s sometime it got established. If you talk about Mexico City, there was a huge city already there before that happened, right? The Az, that was the like the capital of the Aztec Empire. And they had established a city, an urban type city, you know, I don't know how many thousands of years ago. Like it's been gone forever. So muy bien. El epítome de la cultura mexicana puede ser otra ciudad importante, Guadalajara. Mm. Es famosa por la música mariachi, que es donde fabrican el tequila. So the epitome of the Mexican culture might be in another important city, which is called Guadalajara. Mm. You've got Mexico City, which is the capital and the biggest city. But when I think of Mexico, like the first things that come to mind is tequila and mariachis, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's from another city called Guadalajara, right? Okay. And Guadalajara is famous for mariachi music and it's where they make most of the tequila. Okay. La Plaza de Armas es la plaza principal de Guadalajara y es el sitio de la catedral y el palacio de gobierno. So a plaza is like a town square in Spanish cities. So the square, the, the arm square, or the square of arms is the main town square in Guadalajara, and it's the site of where the cathedral is and also the governor's palace. Okay. Verdadero o falso, Alex? Mexico está al norte de los Estados Unidos. Ah, uh, falso. El acento mexicano es fuerte. Strong. Verdadero. Verdadero. Mm -hmm. Verdadero, ok. La ciudad de México es muy pequeña. Also. Sí, es muy grande. La arquitectura de México no es interesante. Mm, also. Guadalajara no es una ciudad importante. Falso. Guadalajara es famosa por sus mariachis y tequila. Verdadero. Muy bien. Muy bien, Alex. So lesson number four uh, for to practice between now and next week. Uh, as always, I highly recommend starting with vocabulary, memorizing all your vocabulary first by starting to understand what the Spanish words mean in English, and then trying to say the, you know, go from English and actually say the words.